here's how to go from this to this. We're going to make this 916 drill perform better than it did from the factory. Consistency with how you hold the drill bit is going to be everything here. I'm making a rocking motion up against the wheel as you see. Rotate and we're going to try to do the same exact thing to this side we did to the other. Once I get the angle roughed in, I like to place a dot in the center just as a reference. I made this illustration to better demonstrate how the drill will be split up when we thin the point. Using the sharp corner of the stone, we're placing the drill against as shown, and the trick here is to get consistent. This is the hardest part of hand sharpening a drill. A curly sharpened drill makes life a whole lot easier. I'm going to go through this hole with one finger. And before you comment about how easy it is to drill aluminum, here's some 316 stainless steel. As far as longevity goes in tougher materials, this drill is going to last as long as any wood off the shelf. If you're having trouble with the previous grind, here's one that's a little bit easier. The difference is, we're not going to split the point and we're not going to do much with rocking motions. It's just going to be flat grinds. It's probably worth investing in a drill point gauge if you're going to do much grinding. We recycle drills that are half inch and smaller at our shop because it's just more economical to do so. This is a good skill to have for saving those custom drills or the large diameter ones. And once you get real good, you can save your carbide drills as well. The most important thing here is to get things consistent and to have the leading edge be the highest point. Otherwise, it's just going to drag, not cut. Let's use this coaxial indicator to find the center of bore in 30 seconds or less. We're going to focus on one axis at a time. Let's start with Y. Slow down, freeze. 15, 25. Halfway is 40. That's our target. We're going to make small adjustments till the needle settles down. If it gets worse, go back the way you came. Then switch to the next axis and repeat those steps. And we're going to keep going back and forth until the needle stops moving. If you've ever needed to thread into a shoulder like you see here to have a nut thread all the way on, there's really only one way, and that's to create a groove and thread as close as you can. How do you orient a round part that has no flat surfaces to reference against? One way is to drop into the holes like you see here and find the lowest point. The part can then be rotated until the lowest points coincide.